Hello everyone, my name is Liliana Espinosa. I am delighted to be here to present to you this research that I did as a part of my master at the University of Northampton with the support of Dr. Michael Opok. Let's start with the agenda with the topics that I am going to cover today. First of all, I'm going to make an introduction. Then we are going to see the dependencies that we can find when we are trying to exploit ILP. Then we are going to see the role of ILP, its techniques, and its conclusions. So the first thing that we need to have in mind is that ILP is a number of instructions that can be executed simultaneously in a clock cycle. We are talking about a program or a system that we are um, building. We have three types of dependencies. Data dependencies, control dependencies, and resource dependencies. The execution of a process depends on the result of the execution of another process. We need to have that in mind when we are talking about execution and instructions um, executing in parallel. So then the main point when we are trying to exploit ILP or trying or before we see the techniques that exist is that we are going to find some dependencies and in the data dependencies the, the common one or the, the, the normal ones are the read after writing or row, write after reading or word, and write after writing. What is the point of having in mind these dependencies? We need to take care of these before trying to define the execution of the solutions in parallel. Of those that can be eliminated through renaming are WAR and WAP but is one that we call a true dependency and is row, read after writing, and we need to take care of this one because we cannot avoid it in any way. The other dependency, the other dependency is the control dependency, and this is when we have a control in the program, so we have an if statement, and then we have the then part. We cannot execute the if a statement and the then at the same time because we are going to have a hazard or a problem in our at the execution of a program. So we need to take care of the controls to understand or to define the order of execution of every single instruction. And the last one, that is the resource dependency or name dependency, is when we are tra trying to execute both two instructions or more that tr are trying to access the same resource or the name or the same register. So in the plot we can see how the processor has been evolutionating through the time and we are going to see the role of ILP in this evolution. So one of the interesting facts that we can see in this plot is that the number of transistors used in a machine has been increasing almost linear. But this also contrasts with the size of the computers of nowadays. So it is very interesting how the speed of the clock and the energy have not increased substantially. So this, is, this, this has a really strong reason and it's because if we have more speed, we are going to spend more energy. And this in general is not going to be very sustainable. And also if it were sustainable, it were going to be really expensive. So because of that, we see that plateau in, that, in the power and in the frequency of the processors nowadays. So what are the techniques of exploding ILP? The first one and the most basic, but also the base of the other techniques that we are going to find is the instruction pipeline. This is the most basic technique to exploit ILP as we can see in the presentation. In pipeline, several instructions are executed in several stages in the processor without each one to overlap. So how we can find this? Generally, we are going to find four stages, the fetch one, the decode one, the execute one, and the write one. So how we can find our exploit ex execution in parallel? 
So every single instruction is going to be in one of the stages, one per cycle clock. So in the in a dynamic planning, the hardware can increase the ILP by rearranging the instruction and runtime in the following way. So the instructions that are independent can be executed in simultaneously. But that instructions that need another uh, instruction to be executed need to wait in a queue. So even when the the meaning the base of this technique is very basic. It is also very powerful because in runtime we can move the execution or we can reorder the execution of the instructions. Other technique that we found as very reliable and that can improve the performance in certain way is the very long instruction word compiler. So this is responsible for starting the instruction package for multiple, multiple concurrent package for multiple concurrent problems without hardware, hard, hardware interference. So when we have like one long, long, long instruction that is concatenated and is ordered in a static way, but we can define when we have dependencies or not, we can use the very long instruction word. There are many variations of this scheme in processors modern superscalars. However, the key concept of tracking and processing dependencies in instructions to allow execution as soon as, as, soon as operands are available and renaming records to eliminate WAP and WAR dependencies are common characteristics. So the, the main point on Tomasulo's approach is that one instruction is taken from the queue and if there is a space of the, in the reservation station, it is placed there. If the operands are in the record bank, they are sent to a reservation station and the instruction can be executed. It's going to be monitored every time until the operands are ready and the operation can be executed. And the last but not the least is the speculative execution is one of the most important techniques that the instructions that are executed without knowing if they are going to be required or not. So in the beginning, when we are building our program, it defines what are the instructions that we need first or the last. So they are going to execute all the instructions in one go. And even when this can sound that it's going to crash the performance, in reality, when they did this in the beginning, they're not going to do it again. So it, at the end, it improves the performance of our program. With this technique, in practice, the performance is greatly increased and latency is minimized, generating this mode a greater parallelism. But among the disadvantages that may exist with this technique, we are going to find advantages that are going to really improve the performance of our program. These are the conclusions of my research. Uh, we are going to see that parallelism will continue uh, in the future, that hardware has great advantages of the, over the software, that we need to improve the way that we are making software in order to improve the performance and to use the tools that hardware is bringing bring us today and also that dynamic planning uses register renaming that nowadays the techniques that are more used are the ones that are dynamic the ones that are speculative even when they can make more mistakes we are seeing that in the results at the end we are seeing greater improvements in the performance and um, that speculation as the word says is when we make ex we execute 
we can execute instruction out of order. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, to me to be here. And if you need any information, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you so much.